Hello and welcome students to another episode of History at Home. In today's episode, we're going to look at some of the pros and cons during the Neolithic Revolution. Before we continue, we're going to review some of the key concepts that we discussed in class. Um, starting off, namely, the Neolithic Revolution happened around 10,000 BCE, which we know is roughly 12,000 years ago. And this event is when humans discovered the process of agriculture. Agriculture gave us many different pros and cons, but one of the biggest pros that we gain from agriculture is the idea that we can stop being nomadic and wandering from place to place following the food source, and we can begin to build permanent settlements. During this time as well, humans are going to begin domesticating both plants and animals, and the way they are domesticating the plants and animals is through a process known as selective breeding. This is when you're trying to breed either plants or crops for specific um, traits, such as high yield within crops or obedience. Um, within animals. And this event, the agricultural or Neolithic revolution, is happening in a place that historians call the Fertile Crescent. So if we're looking at this picture of Africa, we also see up here the region that we call the Middle East, and that is where agriculture first develops. And it's known as the Fertile Crescent because it makes kind of this upside down U shape, which is look like a crescent. So this is where the first agricultural communities developed. And if we kind of zoomed in on that map, you would see modern day countries like Syria, Iraq, Iran, and Saudi Arabia. And you would see this giant arc of very fertile land where the first farming communities developed. So continuing with the Fertile Crescent, what you need to know is this is the huge area of land that extends really across two continents, Asia and Africa. And this is where the world's first farming communities appeared. And it includes modern day countries like Iraq, Iran, Syria, Lebanon, Egypt, Israel, Palestine, Jordan, and Turkey. It's a huge, huge area. And soon we're gonna focus on this place here between the two rivers, Euphrates and Tigris River, known as Mesopotamia. And this is where we really see one of the world's first big civilizations. So getting into the topic of this video, we're gonna start looking at the pros and cons of the Neolithic Revolution. So we'll start off with some of the big pros that we get from agriculture. Um, possibly or arguably the biggest positive that we gain from agriculture is the fact that we can control the food supply. And by that, what we mean is we can decide how much food we wanna grow, we can decide what type of food we wanna grow, and we can also decide within reason where we would like to grow our food. So it's controllable. We can grow a lot, we can grow a little, we can grow this type of food over that type of food. So this is something that humans finally have in control, whereas the hunter-gatherers simply ate what they could find or ate what they hunted. Another giant pro of agriculture is the fact that now that we have more food, we can also sustain a larger population of people on this planet. Um, looking at this graph here to the right, you can see for most of human history, we had very little humans on this planet. And it's only until very recently, uh, 1492, when we had half a billion people, the 1800s, we finally hit a billion, and really our population has skyrocketed um, since the turn of the century. So some modern day estimates before we had agriculture, around 72,000 BCE, historians estimate that we only had between about 10,000 to 30,000 people on this planet. Um, right before we discovered agriculture, we just hit the 1 million mark. And now that we have discovered agriculture, we will see our population boom. Um, currently, we have 7.1 billion people on this planet. And within the next 30 years or so, experts believe we'll have close to 9 billion people. Just to kind of visualize that idea. Before we had agriculture, we had about 10 football stadiums of people on this planet. If you wanted, or if I wanted to represent the idea of 7 billion, it would be rather hard to do in this video. So I ask that you go to this website right here, 7billionworld.com. If you go to that website, you will really get an idea of how many people really 7 billion is. Pro number three, agriculture creates permanent settlements. So we know now that we have agriculture, we can form permanent locations. We can stay one place since we know where the food will be. Um, we can also now build items that will keep us safe from the elements and from potential predators. And the first real building blocks on this planet were actually mud bricks um, in Mesopotamia. They were shaped literally out of mud in the shape of a brick. 
And we're also going to consider where we build our settlements. And it would make the most sense to build near fresh water because we need it for crops and we need it for our own survival. So we'll see cities develop within Mesopotamia that looks sort of like this. This is called a city state. You'll see it has a giant wall to protect it as well, but it's also really close to a river. And in fact, they have a canal that runs right through that river here. So that's what we're going to start looking at when we talk about city states in Mesopotamia. The final big pro that I want to talk about with you tonight is um, the fact that agriculture also opens up the ability to create more jobs. So when hunter-gatherers were dominating this planet, we know that men typically did all of the hunting and they made tools, whereas women had the, the chores of gathering food and tending to the fire and sewing and taking care of kids. And that was really the, the limit of jobs. Well, with agriculture, we start to see a whole different variety of jobs appear. So if we had one person that can grow enough food for a lot of people, we're talking 50, 60, maybe even 100 people to survive, those other people will start to work other jobs in order to improve on their life and the life of others. So we see new professions appear like farmers and craftsmen and pottery makers. Eventually we'll see soldiers and government officials and eventually down the line we'll see governments and kings and queens at the top of that uh, governmental structure. So we really see a variety of jobs begin to to spark because of the agricultural revolution. Now let's get into a new idea. Let's look at some of the really terrible things we get from agriculture. One of the worst things about agriculture is that we are so susceptible to the environment. Um, minor disturbances or major disturbances can impact the amount of food that we can grow. And we sort of need what I call Goldilocks conditions on this planet. If we get too much water or too little water, that's terrible for agriculture. So we need just the right amount of water. If we get too much sunlight or too little sunlight, that's terrible for agriculture. And if it's too hot or too cold, it's terrible. We can't really grow food. So we need just kind of the right ingredients for agriculture. We need perfect amounts of water, perfect amounts of sunlight, and perfect temperature in order to successfully grow our food. So we need those perfect Goldilocks conditions. If we don't get those Goldilocks conditions, we can suffer through a drought. And a drought is a long period of time with little or no precipitation. And if we have a drought, like you see in this picture, you're probably not growing a ton of food. Um, droughts can be quite severe. This is a picture of a lake in California in 2011. And this is the same lake just a few years later. And you can see just a huge difference in the amount of water in this lake and it's because at the time california was going through a very severe drought so droughts make us very susceptible um, to a lack of food via agriculture additionally if we cannot grow food we will suffer through what we call a famine and a famine is a long period of time with little or no food and this is usually closely tied to natural disasters like floods or hurricanes earthquakes etc um, if we can't grow food and if we don't have enough food we will suffer what we call a famine and famines are serious business um, the un estimates that today 870 million people or one in eight people on this planet right now suffer from chronic malnourishment. We just simply don't have enough food to feed everyone on this planet. Uh, continuing this idea, one of the worst losses of life, life in human history occurred between 1958 and 1961 um, in China. And the event was actually a famine. 48 million people died because of a famine. So food and agriculture are so important to our survival. Another big con of agriculture, sicknesses and disease spread incredibly quickly. So we've kind of talked about this in class a little bit. A little bit. Hunters and gatherers were pneumatic, so any illnesses or germs, they could move on from because they were always kind of on the go. Um, we don't move as frequently. So the filth and germs that we have accumulate over and over again. Think about the desk or the doorknob that you touch in the classroom. That's been touched by hundreds and thousands of hands on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and it can get quite disgusting. So we touch and we use things that are constantly being touched by people that are sick or ill, and we can track diseases and illnesses from that. Finally, agriculture negatively impacted our health. So Hunters and gatherers, they were constantly on the move. They're nomadic, so their bodies are nice and fit. Whereas you guys can sit upwards of eight hours and you get severe health issues like obesity and high blood pressure and blood clots as a result. Um, hunter gatherers also had a better diet than you. They had low carbs and low sugar diet. Overall, their teeth were better than yours. You had to brush your teeth constantly because you have a high carbohydrate and high sugar diet. 
And finally, since the population is low and population centers are low as well, um, sicknesses and diseases do not spread as quickly as they do in densely populated centers. Okay, thank you for watching and that will be all for tonight.